Every person who uses drugs puts themselves at risk for an overdose, regardless of the way that they're putting the drug into their body. Could be smoking it, injecting it, swallowing pills. Drug overdose is now the leading cause of accidental death in the United States, and opiate addiction is driving the epidemic. Opioids or opiates are a classification of drugs that include heroin, methadone, oxycontin, Percocets, fentanyl, and buprenorphine. And the simple definition of an overdose is that it's too much substance on the brain for the body to handle, so it begins to shut down. People are at higher risk of an overdose after a period of abstinence are not using, even as little as two days. And people who are coming out of treatment programs, such as detox, or being released from jail, those folks are also at higher risk. Tolerance decreases after the period of abstinence or non-use, and the risk for overdose increases. And after someone has overdosed once, they are much more likely to overdose again. Mixing drugs also puts people at higher risk. In particular, mixing opiates like heroin with other downers like benzos or alcohol, shifts in drug purity, or changes in the cut from place to place or dealer to dealer, this also can put people at risk. Recently, fentanyl has been found in the heroin supply. It can be indistinguishable from heroin and is an extremely potent and fast-acting opiate that can put even the most experienced drug users at risk of overdose. And changes in the way that people use drugs, like going from snorting or smoking to injecting, this also can put people at higher risk of overdose. Using alone is the biggest risk factor, and this is because no one is around to recognize the signs of overdose or administer Narcan or call for help. An overdose is different from just being high. So if you come upon someone who looks like they might be in trouble, first look for the signs of overdose. Look for blue lips and fingertips and check their breathing. If it is slow or labored, or if they've stopped breathing altogether. Try to get the person to respond to you verbally first. Gently shake the person if there's no response. Hey. Hey, are you all right? If the person still doesn't respond, perform a sternal rub. And in the past, people have used old school methods like ice, slapping, kicking, or burning to try to bring somebody back. But a strong sternal rub is the safest test. Rub your knuckles firmly on their breastbone for five to 10 seconds, as hard as you can. And if the person does not respond to that amount of pain stimulus, you know that you have a medical emergency. You must call 911. Hi, I need, I need an ambulance. I have a guy who's unresponsive. He's not breathing. 85 Maple Street, please hurry. Rescue breathing is a critical component in responding to an overdose. You can keep someone alive until the EMTs arrive just by rescue breathing. First, place the person on their back. Make sure that person's airway is clear. Do a quick sweep with two fingers and make sure that there's nothing blocking the airway like food or gum. And if there is, you should remove it. Place a hand gently under their chin and gently tilt their head back. Pinch the nose, create a tight seal between your mouth and theirs. Give two short breaths. Blow enough air into the lungs to make the chest rise. Turn your head after each breath to ensure the chest is rising and falling. If their chest is not rising and falling, go back to step one and check to make sure that there's nothing blocking the airway, or gently tilt their head back a little bit more to open up the airway. After the two initial breaths, breathe once every five seconds. After giving the person a few rescue breaths, administer Narcan. Naloxone or Narcan is a drug that can temporarily reverse the effects of an opiate overdose. There are things that everybody needs to know about Narcan. First, Narcan only works on opioids. Narcan cannot be abused and it is not addictive. 
Narcan wears off in about 30 to 90 minutes or so, so it's a very temporary solution to buy you some time before medical intervention. There are different formulations of Narcan. The multi-step nasal spray, the single-step nasal spray, and there's an auto-injector that comes with both visual and voice instructions. And there's also an injectable form of Narcan that needs to be delivered directly into the muscle. The most widely used form of Narcan is the intranasal. It is sprayed up each nostril and gets absorbed by the mucous membranes. To use the nasal Narcan, you need to put it together. Take the yellow cap off the top, the yellow cap off the bottom, and gently screw the nasal attachment or the atomizer with the plastic wingtips into the delivery device. Then pop the cap off the medication and gently screw the Narcan vial into the delivery device. Spray half up one nostril, then half up the other continue to perform rescue breathing. If the person does not come back in about three to five minutes, administer a second dose of Narcan and continue to provide rescue breathing. In the event that you have to leave the person alone, make sure to put them in the recovery position, which means lying the person slightly on their side, their body supported by a bent knee with their face turned to the side. This will help to keep their airway clear and prevent them from choking in the event that they throw up. After the Narcan is delivered, the person may feel like they're sick or in withdrawal since it blocks the action of the opiates in the brain. Assure the person that the feeling will go away and explain to them what happened. Hey, are you okay? You just overdosed. Why don't you tell us what happened? Narcan does not make people violent but they will likely be disoriented, so you should explain to them that they just overdosed and that you gave them Narcan. Keep the person calm, be compassionate, and talk to them. Keep them engaged until EMS arrives. Many fatal overdoses happen in bathrooms or behind closed doors where no one is around to help. Know the risk factors for overdose. Be aware of the signs and know how to respond. Talk to your loved ones about overdose and have an honest conversation and come up with a safety plan. Make sure that everyone knows how to use Narcan, everyone knows how to perform rescue breathing, and everyone knows to call for help. Following these steps can mean the difference between life and death.